Okay. So I already started pulling this guy off. There's a hose coming off. This is what you gotta do to swap your 323i Euro E30 to the later model Motronic 1.3. It's supposed to run smoother and better than the Jetronic system. And you know it's easier to tune, so should say that you're going to want to get all your vacuum hose and everything out of the way. We're going to be taking the intake off. Um, down below I will be uh, putting a list in the description of parts you need to do this swap. But just kind of brief overlook, you need the AFM, intake, throttle body. Uh, you need the distributor stuff that goes on the cam gear. And obviously the ECU and wiring harness. Okay, so I have disconnected the fuel over here. I have disconnected the battery over there. Disconnected the coil. Should probably take this coil wire off too. Let's see, there's a vacuum hose down here. It goes up into the throttle body. Follow that up all the way. It goes in back there. Um, basically just clearing out space until I can get to all the bolts for the intake so I can pull it off in one unit. So pretty sure I got everything unhooked from around the intake. Got the cold injector fuel line unhooked right there. Got the wires back here unhooked. Got this vacuum line going down to the distributor unhooked. Got the distributor wires unhooked, and then these coolant lines to the throttle body. I may be able to get to all the bolts now. They're all down there. Should be, I believe, 12 total. That was a lot harder than I thought it was going to be getting it off. Forgot about the big old tube for the drain right there. Be careful of that. That gets in the way and you don't want to bend that up it's right here I uh, took the liberty and unhooked all the wires from the fuse box all the wires that come in right here they bolt to the battery terminal and then they go into the fuse box also the injector harness that's all one piece on this on this car and it's threaded up through the intake right through the middle let me show you guys right. get some light here move that out of the way is it right through there you guys can see it and it's kind of a pain you gotta unbolt the unbolt the injector and the fuel rail from right there there right there and those two holes pull it up and out of the way and then you gotta unclip all the the uh, connectors from the fuel injectors for the wiring harness I got everything disconnected from the coil like I said and the distributor down there and and from the injectors and the coolant temp sensors and starter so now I just gotta pull them through the gotta get inside and pull it through that grommet so I also just realized the uh, front foot holes right here, this one is going to have to be moved, I'm pretty sure. See, there's a, so you can't see it, but there's a hole in that cover, and that's where the, eventually this cover right here for the cam sprocket will be replaced by the late model one. And this hose is in the way. That means... If you really are smart about it, smarter than me, you don't have to unhook all the fuel injectors and unhook the fuel rail and smell like fuel really bad for the rest of the night. So, do as I say, now as I do. It's been a couple days, but I decided to clean up the cylinder head a little bit, and you can see I put the gaskets on there. Um, also cleaned up the tube that sits underneath the intake, between the intake and the uh, 
and the block. I, I use a little zip tie to hold it down. Hopefully that'll help make it easier to uh, install the intake because I gotta tell you that was a pain in the butt taking it off. Well, uh, I'll get back to you. Well, there it is. The intake's on finally. Had to go to the auto parts store and grab some smaller O-rings. They were too big and uh, they were too thick, I should say. But that was a lot harder than I ever thought it was going to be. The The trick with the zip tie really helped down there on the, on the bottom there. I think that's a trick to do if you ever have to do this. Use a zip tie, hold that down, and that intake is a lot easier to work with. Because you just enough room to slide the top. You can't see it, but there's a the top goes in right underneath there for that tube, and it slides right in after you undo the zip tie. Next step is to start running wires for the alternator and put the throttle body on from the eye donor. We got the throttle body on. Decided to start pulling the distributor out from right there. Um, it is over here. Okay. Notice that gear. There's a hex. Can't really see it, but there's a little hex-looking shaft that sticks up in there. That's the oil pump. Make sure. When you do this swap, you get out of an, a late model M20 or a ETA engine, the little cup that sits there instead. It's, this is the blank plate, and then you got the gear that sits down in there. Notice it is also hex. That is what drives your oil pump. Without that, your car goes boom. There's also a little bearing in there. I took the liberty to clean these up real good. I figured before I put it in. Um, yeah, they actually don't look half bad. Cleaned up all right. But anyways, I'm going to put these in. I can't do it one-handed because I'm uh, dumb. So I also wanted to point out that this bracket right here came off. That, that was holding the distributor down. That also is the same. So you don't have to get a new one of those, you just need to get the blank plate and the gear that's underneath it. And it just kind of locks in place. Next, I think I'm going to take that hose off, because it's in the way. We need to do the timing belt cover, and I also need to get rid of these wires. Also going to have to take that guy off, and pull the thermostat housing cover off. So I can do the thermostat, because I might as well while I'm in here. I got the thermostat off, I got the hose off, I also took the top hose off to make it easier to get to the timing belt cover. I also got the distributor wires moved. Got the timing cover off up top and then I had to pull the water pump pulley right here to get the harmonic balancer off. I needed to pull that off anyway so it didn't matter to get this bottom, there's a bottom plate here. This guy right there was sitting bring it on there, right there, okay? So that needed to come off. And the water pump pulley is out of the way. So now I can put the new timing cover on and switch out this guy right there. Okay, turns out that guy right there it's supposed to stay there. This is the new cover that you need to put on. It's You can pull it from a 325i or a 325e. I still need to put the uh, rotor mount in there, but I just want to show you guys real quick what it looked like before I did all that. So I'm going to go ahead and put the rotor on, and I'm going to put the harmonic balancer on down here and then set up my pulleys again so I can put that front end back together. Okay, so so before I put the harmonic balancer on from the 325i, 
you also need this guy right here. This is the mount for the new crankshaft position sensor that goes on the 325i. On the E cars and the 323i, it goes over here. You can kind of see it if I get out of the thing. It goes right there. Get out of the light here. It goes right there. On the 225i for the E30, it goes over here down on the block. It's kind of hard to see, but it's like it's right below the water pump, right there. There's two bolt holes that this bracket will mount to. Decided to go ahead and put my thermostat in and put my thermostat housing back together. I also set up the belt and alternator, tighten it up, and I got you can see over there in the corner that I got the uh, water pump pulley back on, and down there just below you can barely see it in the shadow there. I got the harmonic balancer on. So I got my I decided to put my thermostat housing back together with the new thermostat. Uh, also tighten down my alternator, put the belt on, put the, uh, you can see back there in the distance, the water pump pulley, put that back on. And then let me go over here. Like my rusty hood. I got a small garage. And down there, You can see that the brackets there. Let me go back to the other side. It's a little dark over here. I think I can see it better on the other side. Okay, right there. You can see it kind of in the shadow down there, that big bolt at the bottom. But I got that guy on. It all bolts on. So far, everything's bolted on. I kind of I had to finagle my, this top timing belt cover piece to get it on. I think mine was warped a little bit. Anyways, next up, I think we're going to go ahead and install the distributor cap, rotor, and the plug wires. So I'm putting this in here because I screwed up. I went out and bought a camera, bought an external mic, and bought a tripod to record things easier because I found it's kind of difficult to record everything on your phone uh, when you're trying to work on stuff. So the style of recording has changed, but also when I recorded everything on my camcorder, I did not realize that I had the mic plugged into the wrong spot. So all my footage doesn't have any sound from here on out. Uh, I'm going to do the best I can to explain things uh, via subtitles. It's not complicated. It is fairly easy to follow even without the subtitles, but I'll put in what parts I used and where I used them, you know, explain things. Anyways, back to the video.
Well, that's going to be it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, uh, please give me a thumbs up. Stay tuned for part two. And if you want to see more cool stuff, please subscribe to my channel below. And I'll see you in the next one.